Closing costs. We hear the term all the time, but there's still a lot of confusion. So today we're taking a deep dive into what closing costs are, why each one is important, and at the end, we've got a couple of strategies to help reduce them. So let's dive right in. Here's a list of the expenses we'll be discussing today. We have the lender fee, the rate buy-down, the attorney fee, tax and insurance escrow, first year of insurance premium, title insurance, prepaid interest, and the recording fee. Before we dive into the details, when people ask which color blue you are, and your response is red, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons down below because you know which team is actually the best. Okay, first on our list is the lender fee. Your loan officer is one of the members of your home buying team. That's in addition to your friendly neighborhood real estate agent. And the lender fee is the administrative fee they'll charge for their work throughout the process. Now you can and should speak with multiple loan officers to get a feel for the one that best fits your needs. Let's move on to rate buy-down. Buying down a rate refers to spending money up front in order to get a better interest rate for your mortgage. You're effectively purchasing a lower interest rate. There are times where a lender will require you to buy down the rate. If they're not required, you can speak with your loan officer to see if a rate buy-down would benefit you. A good loan officer will take the time to run a cost-benefit analysis and tell you what options you have. Next up, we have the attorney fee, which the closing attorney will charge for their work throughout the process. The closing attorney is another member of your home buying team, and they'll take care of all of the legal matters around the property you want to purchase. They'll run a title search to make sure the current owner, in fact, owns the home, they'll transfer all of the funds to the appropriate parties, and register everything with the Register of Deeds, which closes the transaction and officially makes the property yours. Different attorneys will have different fees, and similar to lenders, you want to speak with multiple closing attorneys to find the one that best fits your situation. Moving on to tax and insurance escrow. Anytime you see the word escrow, just think money that's held aside which makes the tax and insurance escrow money that's held aside for taxes and insurance. The amount for the tax portion depends on the property's tax value, local property taxes, and when during the year you close. The insurance portion is a little different. Most lenders will pay the homeowner's insurance on your behalf. They'll ask for a few months up front to start the escrow and then roll it into your monthly mortgage payment. They'll then take that money and pay it every year on your behalf for your homeowner's insurance. Your loan officer should help you determine the amounts for both of these and give you an accurate estimate of how much you'll pay at settlement. Moving on to the first year of homeowner's insurance premium, which is paid upfront as part of closing costs. Yes, that's despite having an escrow for homeowner's insurance, you'll still need to pay this at settlement. Now, similar to many services during the home buying process, you want to shop around with different insurance companies to find the one that gives you the best rate. Title insurance is a little known closing cost because it so rarely affects home buyers. But when it's needed, it's an absolute lifesaver. Here's the definition straight from the North Carolina's Department of Insurance. Title insurance protects the insured from losses resulting in from claims against one's ownership of real estate. In lay terms, it protects the new homeowner, that's you, against someone else's claim on owning the property. And it does not have to be a full ownership claim either. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau states that the most common need for title insurance includes contractors who were not paid for work that they did on the house before you bought it. That contractor could place a lien on the home, and a lien is a claim of partial ownership. If this happened or was in the process while you were purchasing the home, title insurance would step in and protect you from that lien. Next, we have prepaid interest, which is the buyer paying interest for the mortgage for the rest of the month. This lines your future payments up so that interest is calculated based on a monthly calendar instead of a date somewhere in the middle of the month. And finally, we have recording fees, which are the administrative fee associated with filing your deed and other documents with the Register of Deeds. And this is what, quote, closes the transaction and transfers the property to you. 
So now that you know more than you ever wanted to about closing costs, where they come from, and why they're necessary, we have four basic strategies to reduce closing costs for you. Ask the sellers to pay a portion. We can shop around for all the various services associated with purchasing a home. We can get the opposite of a rate buy-down, which I'll explain in just a minute. And the last one is close towards the end of the month. The first strategy we have is to ask the sellers to pay for a portion of your closing costs. This is often referred to as seller paid closing costs, but it appears on our contract as seller paid expenses. Now this is an agreement that the seller will take some of the proceeds from the sale of the house and pay the buyer's closing costs on their behalf. The seller must agree to it so it's not always possible depending on market trends. However, one negotiating tactic is to increase the purchase price by the same amount that you're requesting in seller paid expenses. In the end, the seller gets the same amount of money while helping reduce your closing costs. The next strategy is to shop around for all those services. Different lenders, closing attorneys, and insurance companies will charge different rates. Now, this is one way to reduce your closing costs, but if you choose a company solely based on its fee, you might not get the best service. Our third strategy is to increase your interest rate. Remember that rate buy-down from earlier? You could do the exact opposite. You can voluntarily take a higher interest rate, and the lender will pay you money up front to do that. And that's money that's credited directly against your closing costs. The strategy isn't always possible and depends on your credit history, current interest rate market, and your particular lender. And as with the rate buy-down, a good loan officer will walk you through the options to see if this one can work for you. The last strategy we have is to close at the end of the month. And really, it's true. Remember, prepaid interest is calculated based on the remaining days of the month. So if you close towards the end, you could be paying less interest. And depending on your interest rate and loan amount, that could be a significant amount. Now you've had a masterclass in closing costs, what they are, and how to reduce them. Now, if you think I missed anything, or if you have a strategy of your own, please consider dropping it down in the comments. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.